Keyshot released their new AI Shots feature, and I've just spent a few hours putting it through its paces. When Keyshot adds a new feature, it tends to be pretty incremental, like streamlining workflow, or extending capability, or supporting a new file format. This is why incorporating an AI-based image generation engine into Keysha is a pretty big move. It offers users an entirely different way of creating images. AI has become inescapable over the past couple of years, and it's not without controversy either. From copyright and security to environmental and delegation concerns, AI brings with it both excitement and fear among creative professionals. So what about Keyshot's new AI Shots feature? I made this video to show you what I discovered and what worked and what didn't, so you can decide if it's worth exploring on your own. Now, before we dive in, let me be clear about my approach here. These are just my opinions based on my fairly limited testing so far. Others are sharing their experiences and experiments over on Luminaries, the official Keyshot community platform. So I definitely encourage you to check those out as well for additional perspectives. Also worth mentioning, AI Shots is exclusive to Keyshot Studio subscribers and requires a 12.5 gigabyte download that runs locally on your machine. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, as far as the feature itself, there are three modes, Restyle, Background, and Imagine. So we're gonna go through each one of those and see how they actually performed. First up is Restyle mode, and it's designed to work with your 3D geometry. You don't even need materials applied yet. The idea is that your model provides form-based context, and through prompting, you can explore different materials, finishes, colors, and lighting, and even contextual elements like backgrounds and props. I started with a basic lamp model and prompted it to show us various CMF configurations in catalog photoshoot style environments with soft studio lighting. The results were actually pretty interesting, and it created clean, non-distracting environments and even added details like electrical cables when I asked for them. So here's why I think Restyle Mode actually has genuine value. It works like a mood board generator for your specific product. It's like a brainstorming tool for establishing visual direction before you start your actual rendering work. However, when I pushed the lamp example further with more complex material requests, the limitations became pretty clear. I asked for a detailed machined metallic finish with anisotropic reflection, something pretty regularly used in industrial design, and instead the AI gave me just a generic shiny metal. I also tried asking for a cloudy plastic with recycled plastic flakes. Again, it just didn't understand my intent. So when I requested a tortoise shell acetate, a common material in eyewear and luxury goods, the AI had no idea what I was talking about. The pattern here is that the AI struggles with industry-specific materials and technical surface properties. It's matching patterns from training images rather than understanding actual material characteristics that we work with professionally. Next up, we have background mode, which keeps your geometry, materials, and lighting while generating environmental backgrounds. The goal is to quickly add context and staging to your product shots without affecting your carefully crafted model and lighting setup. To be honest, I struggled to find scenarios where background mode worked really well for professional use. The concept is sound, but the execution has fundamental issues. The biggest problem that I ran into is perspective matching. The AI simply cannot understand your camera angle or integrate your product believably into a generated environment. Now, even if you do generate a background you like, you're then faced with the challenge of matching your lighting to the generated environment. Without corresponding HDRIs, your product will never feel properly integrated into the scene. And finally, we have Imagine Mode, which creates images entirely from scratch without any 3D data. It functions like other AI image generators that you might be familiar with, with pure text to image generation. Now this was actually the most functional mode for me in several key areas. When I used very detailed prompts written by the help of Claude AI and set the resolution to 2K by 2K, I was able to generate some genuinely high quality and realistic backplate images. The key insight I discovered was generating images without strong directional lighting. This makes it much easier to integrate a backplate with a generic HDRI since you're not fighting conflicting light sources. I also had success generating a few images for material work. I created a usable wood grain texture, and when it came to generating patterns, I was even able to get some textures that would repeat seamlessly, like this painted ceramic pattern. Also, I was able to generate usable imperfection maps using detailed prompts. These can be useful for adding scratches, smudges, scuffs, and other surface imperfections that make materials look a little more realistic. So in the right scenarios, I could see this saving quite a bit of time and money compared to hunting through stock photography or texture libraries. 
However, I found one major issue when it came to generating backplates, which I would describe as framing control. When I wanted an interior shot without the typical wide angle real estate photo look, I couldn't control the camera perspective. The AI consistently generated wide shots showing floors, ceilings, walls, when I wanted a tighter, more controlled composition. For texture generation, while I had some success with patterns, wood grain textures wouldn't tile seamlessly, a critical requirement for most material work. And there's a bigger issue here. It's pretty difficult to art direct these textures. You can't reliably get specific grain directions, color variations, or surface characteristics that match your design intent. It's kind of like rolling the dice each time. And perhaps the biggest limitation is that you can't iterate on images that you like. So if you generate a low resolution image that works, you can't create a higher resolution version of that same image. So as the magic of LLMs and text to image generation begins to wear off, we're left asking if we can rely on these AI tools to help us create the professional results that we need to deliver. Now, from a stability standpoint, even with an RTX 3090 GPU, I experienced several technical issues. The AI engine took fairly long to start up as it loads the 12 and gigabyte training model into Keyshot. Then after running the AI engine for over an hour, I was repeatedly kicked out of GPU mode despite having plenty of VRAM available. Generally, the workflow feels a little less polished than Keyshot's typical smooth experience. And there are several technical limitations that impact the usability of this key shot AI shots feature. First off, we have no autosave, so generated images will disappear forever if you forget to save them manually or if Keyshot crashes, which had happened to me several times. The AI's ability to understand and render materials, textures, and camera perspectives and positions were also very hit and miss. There's no seamless texture generation, so it can't really create tileable textures for material work. Also, complex prompting dependency. Uh, ironically, I found myself using AI to write really long descriptive prompts in order to get this tool to work well. And finally, no upscaling or iteration. So you can't actually refine the images that you like within Keyshot. You'd have to turn to another standalone tool for that. Now, I should mention that running the AI locally on your computer provides privacy as well as offline capability, which is critical for many of Keyshot's biggest customers. But local AI models are inherently limited compared to cloud versions. However, the core issues I encountered, spatial understanding, material knowledge, and professional workflow integration, would likely persist even with more powerful models to some extent. Now, I'm definitely not anti-AI in Keyshot. I'd actually welcome it if it would help remove some workflow bottlenecks. For example, frame interpolation for faster animation rendering, advanced denoising algorithms, HDRI generation from reference images or backplates, text to texture creation with seamless tiling, intelligent material conversion from non-Keyshot PBR materials, AI-assisted UV unwrapping for complex geometry, texture enhancement and upscaling for extra details, and in-painting tools for adding details like fasteners, part lines, and cables. But I feel like these applications would enhance Keyshot's core strengths rather than trying to replace design decisions that should remain human controlled. So after all of this, should you be using AI shots? Here's my honest assessment. For most professional work, stock photography and established texture libraries plus traditional key shot techniques remain more efficient and predictable, for now. AI Shots feels like an interesting first step into AI integration, but in my opinion, it's more of a technology preview than a production-ready tool. I wasn't able to create anything in Keyshot that I couldn't create using another standalone AI image generation tool. So I hope this saves you some time and helps you decide whether or not this tool is right for your workflow. I'll be getting back to traditional Keyshot tutorials soon. Thank you for your patience. And until next time, happy rendering.